Good morning, Ian. Thank you all for coming out today to uh, fellowship. And, bro, thank you for inviting me once again to come out and speak to the folks. Uh, let's open in a word of prayer. Okay. Lord, we just thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your mercies. We just ask that you would just be with us today. Help us to have a word from your word, Lord, that will encourage and uplift and bless us, Lord. We just thank you for all these men. We ask that you would meet them in the very place that they are and provide the very thing you know that they stand in need of. We ask for your grace and for your mercy and for your continued care, and we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Well, you know, there was a scripture that came to mind to me and it's just stayed with me. But there was just one specific word that stood out to me. Uh, and it is Colossians 3.16, and that's where we're going to go, Colossians 3.16, okay? Colossians is an amazing book written by Paul to the Colossians, um, instructing them on um, how to live. There were heresies that were in the church, and so he was making sure that they stayed on track. And uh, as you go through that, there's a whole list of things that it tells us that we are supposed to put off since we uh, have become uh, members of Christ. We're supposed to put off the old man and put on the new man. Okay. And then it gets to chapter 3, and it comes to 3.16, uh, the results of putting on the new man. And uh, I just want to focus on that one verse. Colossians 3:16. Now most of you all know me and you know my testimony. You know, I grew up in Bakersfield, California. Um, two wonderful parents who loved the Lord. My father was a Pentecostal preacher, fire and brimstone by the word. Uh, my mom was a wonderful missionary, woman of God. And it is a wonderful thing to be able to have been brought up in a home of people who know the Lord and serve the Lord and were great examples for the rest of us. You know, the problem is that we have choice and sometimes we don't make the right choice. <laughs> we choose to not follow good instruction even though we have it. And that can be a problem. That's why I think Colossians 3.16 stood out to me. Because it starts off with a little simple word, and it's let. L-E-T. That small word has such powerful impact of what can follow. Okay. <laughs> so it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, we know that God is sovereign. Um, and... Even though he is sovereign, he allows us to have choice. He gives us choice. And so, even though he directs our path, <laughs> he's the one that's behind it all, he still gives us choice, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Putting off the old man. Those things that they were talking about is putting off those things that we used to be involved in before we came to Christ. Things like fornication, uncleanliness, uncleanness, passions, evil desires and covetousness, <laughs> idolatry, anger. Anybody have a problem with anger? Wrath, malice, blasphemy, foul language. Yeah, I spent 33 years in the Navy. I know a lot about that. <laughs> And lying, we're compelled to not lie to one another. Since we put off the old man and we put on the new man. In putting on the new man, you know, and 
after Christ has elected us, God has chosen us, we're supposed to put on mercies, tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering, okay? Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Forgiving people is a real problem because sometimes we will hold on to things forever. Amen. And those things will impact us. It can impact us physically and it can impact relationships that we have, okay? And it also can impact our witness, okay? We're also supposed to put on love, which is the profound bond of perfection. Showing love, having that agape love, and being able to share that with all that we come into contact with. Just plain old agape love, okay? Back to Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Thank you, Brother Joe, for the songs of worship this morning. That is what it is about. That small little word, let, can have vast consequences based on how we choose to follow it or not follow it. The word let first showed up in the Bible back in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 when God said let there be light. The whole creation um, scenario started with let. Word spoken by God and it all happened. And you all know that we won't go to all those lets but we'll drop down to where it says in verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, according to our likeness. And man became a living being. Okay. There's the opposite of let is let not or don't let. Okay. And a famous scripture for that is uh, John 14, one, and also John 14, 27, which I'll read, says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In verse 27, it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Once again, neither let it be afraid. Okay. Looking at the creation account, we have a clear picture. It's undeniable that God is sovereign. He's totally sovereign. By that, I mean He is supreme. He's totally supreme. There's a scripture that goes with that, Isaiah 45, 5. It says, I am the Lord, and there is no other, no God beside me. He's omnipotent. Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Right? God is victorious. Yes, indeed. Isaiah 14, 24, which says, It will happen as I have planned. If the Lord has planned it and He's thought it, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. He is everlasting. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Revelations 1.8. He rules and He reigns. He reigns over all the nations according to Psalm 47.8. He's everything that we need. He is. He says so right here, Philippians 4.19. It says, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God never changed. He's immutable. Okay. Malachi 3, 6, which says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. 
Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. God is good. Amen. Mark 10, 18, where he says, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Okay. And God never fails. He never fails. Zephaniah 3, 5. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails. Amen. So we know that God is sovereign. Those are an acronym that I put together because that shows me, it allows me to go to Scripture. If you ever have any question, <laughs> go and to the Word and you know for certain that you will get the direction and guidance that you need. So back to Colossians 3.16 and that little word, let. As it's used in Colossians, that lets us know and it implies that we have a say-so in the matter. <laughs> Sovereign God gives us a say-so. So we have an opportunity to choose, okay? We have free will. Joshua told the children of Israel in Joshua 24, 15, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. They had an opportunity to choose. Same thing with Moses. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, he says, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So Moses is telling those children of Israel, you have a choice, but you have to choose. Now we have that same responsibility. We have to choose. Okay. Paul talks about it in Romans 10, 13, where he says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we all have that opportunity to choose Christ, right? And we have to do that also. So I had three questions that came up and it says, so how do you let the word dwell in you richly? How do you do that? How do you let the word dwell in you richly? And then the second question is, why is it a good choice to let the word dwell in you richly? And third, what is the result of letting the Word dwell in you richly? Letting the Word dwell in you richly involves making the choice. We have to choose, number one. We have to surrender our will to His will. Last week in the men's Bible study, last Friday, um, bro, I was here. And they were talking about Proverbs chapter 5, I believe it was. Yes. And there was so much discussion about chewing on the Word of God. Is that right? Yes. Chewing on the Word of God. We have to take that Word and we have to chew on it. Okay? We want the meat of the Word. Not just the milk, but the meat. And we get that by being in the Word. Okay? Studying the Word memorizing the word and when you need it recalling the word okay now in james we're reminded that we need to be doers of the word not just hearers so if we have that word we have to make the choice to do what it says and a lot of us are hard-headed <laughs> myself included and sometimes we know what to do but we still choose not to do it not a good choice but we still do it and so, as men, we have to be here to remind one another that we need to do, you know, follow the Word. Stay in the Word, know the Word, and do the Word. So, as reading it, studying it, meditating on the Word, recalling the Word, and then we have to stand on the Word, rely on the Word.
In doing so, the Word will dwell in us richly. We have so many opportunities to do that. We have radio with all kinds of messages. Okay, and, and, and just like I do, I have to listen to it three or four times because I don't get it all the first time, you know? So I have to go back and, and hear it again and again so that it sinks in, okay? So why is it a good choice to let the Word dwell in you richly? By letting the Word dwell in you richly, you have the resources to battle the everyday battles that we face. I don't know about you all, but I face some pretty good situations. And sometimes we don't know where they're coming from. They just come out of nowhere, you know. I almost had to call bro and ask for a pinch hitter. You guys remember the Dodgers, uh, was that uh, Gibson? Gibson? They had to call in a pinch to knock it out of the ballpark. Sometimes we get uh, blindsided with things, you know, a broken down car, you know, or, or, or uh, all kinds of situations that happen. Uh, but we have to uh, be ready to face those battles that come up. I work in the bereavement ministry. It's a wonderful ministry because it gives you an opportunity to use the word to encourage people at a time when they are at their lowest many times. And so it's important to be able to have the word of God to combat those things, to uplift someone, to encourage someone. Okay. What about anxiety? Is there anyone that has to deal with anxiety? That's a real big thing. It's, it used to be uh, the top uh, disorder of females, and it was number two for men for a long time. There's a whole list of things that they include under anxiety, those anxiety disorders. We can go to Philippians to deal with that. Go right to Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 8. Yes, one of my favorite passages. It tells us to be anxious for nothing. Okay, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Okay. And then once we've gone through that, you know, to help us to continue uh, not being anxious, it tells us what to focus our mind on. It helps you out by telling you what to think about where to keep your mind. A lot of times our mind will wander and get off the wrong track and we're focusing on the negative things and building that up and when we should be focusing on other things. Verse 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, I like thinking about lovely things, okay? Whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, okay? So, 1 Peter 5 tells us, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So when we're going through those periods of anxiety, we just have to take that anxiety, whatever it is that we are putting so much care into, and cast it on him. What about guilt? Now, we all have, have a past, and sometimes that guilt monster comes up, and we have to deal with that. Well, how do you, how do you deal with that? You deal with it with the word. Beautiful scriptures to let us know what to do. John 8, chapter, uh, verse 35, 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Yes. Jesus paid it all. <laughs> we don't have to do anything else. We just have to trust that. Yeah. Believe it. Accept it. It's wonderful. Romans 8. 1 and 2, another one of my favorite scriptures, which says, Therefore now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 
It's a beautiful thing to know that we're not condemned. God does not condemn us. What he does do is he forgives us. <laughs> beautiful. Okay. What about anger? Nobody here gets angry. We're all my peace, loving. Anger. Anger issues. Proverbs is full of scripture that we can go to to help us to fight those times when we get angry and out of control. Hmm. Proverbs 14, 29 says, He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. The, in 19 and 11 it says, the, foolish, the foolishness of a man twists his way and his heart's fret against the Lord. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger and his glory is to overlook a transgression. Sometimes we just have to forgive and overlook things, okay? So that we can remain calm and in control. What about fear? Fear is a real monster. <laughs> and sometimes we have to fight that. And how do we fight it? Once again, we fight it with the Word. We go to Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? <clears throat> Amen. So we just have to go to those familiar scriptures. Hang on them. Stand on them. Help to pull us out of that. Worry is another thing, you know, and oh, there's just so much written about not worrying. We should not worry, and we can go to the scripture to help us with that. Um, Matthew chapter 6, uh, part of the Beatitudes, it comes to one, uh, I think it's the seventh one, it tells us, uh, do not worry. And it tells us all the reasons why we should not worry, don't need to worry. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We can go right there and deal with worry. So what is the result of letting the Word of God dwell in us richly? We develop a little bit more wisdom. We get a little wiser, and so we know how to better deal with things, how to make better decisions, how not to make the same mistakes that we did in the past. Okay. Wisdom involved knowing the truth, and the Word is truth, so we know what to do and how to do it, you know? One of the things that I always pray about is the Lord to help me to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason with the right attitude. It is so important to do it that way because the Lord is looking on our heart. He knows our heart and what we do it and why we do it. Okay. So wisdom. It helps us to be more wise. Also, it prepares us to teach the Word and share the Word and evangelize. Letting the Word dwell in you richly. Prepares us for teaching and sharing the Word. And the only way that we can give the correct information is by knowing the right information. The true information is in the Word. That's the true guidance. So if we know it, we can share it. And many of you do that extremely well. You all have your own technique and styles and calling, and it's needed because we, there are people out there to reach. Wonderful. And it also prepares us to admonish one another, okay? Teaching and admonishing one another. There's a way to do that. There's an appropriate way to admonish folks. And it tells us how to do it. It involves the Word. You admonish people with the Word, not beating them over the head with it, but sharing it with them and explaining it to them, showing them, this is what the Word says. This is how we're supposed to live. This is what you did. This is how to correct it. Simple and easy and loving. That's the way it should be done. It says, it involves warning people in a loving manner, which involves using the word to correct, to correct us. 
the Psalms and Proverbs are full of corrective instruction, and this is the way to help one another and hold one another accountable by adhering to the Word. Okay. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. <clears throat> Psalm 119, 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Okay. The word is true. We just need to stand on it. Okay. Songs are really important to me because, you know, it is so often you hear a song that kind of motivates you and lifts you up and encourages you. Late at night, you know, when you're having one of those days, a song in the night comes, a song of deliverance. Psalm 77, 6 says, I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. There's nothing more uplifting than singing praises to the Lord. Letting the words dwell in us richly involves making choices to follow Jesus, letting him rule and reign in our lives. And I'm going to close here with the prayer. And, and as we do that, I'm going to invite my brother Joe to come back up here and lead us in a song. Because, you know, it says, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Okay? We have a choice. We can let the Word dwell in us. Which, and we do that by turning over the reins of our life to the Lord. Okay? And the song that came to my mind was I have decided to follow Jesus. Is that appropriate? Let's stand and sing that. Sing a, okay. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No, no turning, turning back. back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Oh, no turning back. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you so much that you have given us a choice, Lord. Help us to always choose on a daily basis to follow you. To keep the cross before us, Lord, and the world behind us. We just thank you for all these men who came out, Lord. We just ask you to bless them with the special blessing that each one stands in need of. Help them to continue to follow you and to lead as you have led them, Lord. We just ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much.